help us learn stuff as we as we do these. They don't want you to do these without you know. Uh, this one page one twenty. Everybody join us there. Uh, no calculators, no friends. Do your own work. There are eighteen problems up here in your workbook. I'm going to give you five minutes. Begin. I'm going to quickly. Oh, my TAs were in the other classes with me today. You can go ahead and do this, but um, you to keep me on target here because if I look at this and I look at the board, I get kind of mixed up. So the first one, the answer, grade zero is negative 20. Uh, then we got negative 10. Our third one is 20. Uh, our fourth one is 10. Uh, our fifth one is negative 10. And our sixth one is negative 10. Next column, okay? So let me see if I can do this. Zero, negative 46, negative 46, so zero. Negative 46, negative 46, and then uh, 46 and 0 and 0, right? All right, and then negative 2 and negative 12 and 2. Did I say negative 2, negative 12, and 2? Okay. And then 2 and 12 and negative 12. Okay. Raise your hand if you got 100%. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, cool. All right. So here's the deal. You know what an Olympico goal is? Olympico? Anybody? Who plays soccer? Everybody plays soccer? Okay. You know what a hat trick is? What's a hat trick? Three goals. Three goals in one game. Okay. All right. Do you know what an Olympico is? An Olympico goal? You ever heard of that? So. It's when you shoot a goal from a corner kick. So you're in the corner, you have a corner kick, and you bend the ball back into the goal. My son scored an Olympico last night in his game. That's pretty freaking cool, man. Um, so Sugar Soccer, um, they've never won a state championship, boys or girls, for all the years they had a soccer team, which is years and years and years until 2021. And the boys brought home the state championship. My uh, son was a junior that year and um, top defensive player on the team. Uh, next year was senior and they repeated, last, that was last year, they repeated and won the state championship again. And uh, he was the defensive captain. And now uh, he's graduated and then I have a son now who's a junior playing varsity soccer. And um, they are ranked number one in the state. And um, on Tuesday, they played the number four team in the state, Teton, who's their number one rival. And they're kind of stressing about the game. And they, um, they got, uh, you can pause for a second here. Um, we've got to discuss negative numbers. Is there any algebra up on this board? Any algebra up on that board? Remember an algebraic expression has what in it? Variable. A variable. You see any variables? So what's that up there? It's another A word. It's arithmetic. It's all arithmetic. Every single thing up there is arithmetic. And you're thinking, hey, Brother Rich, I thought we got done with that crap. You know, we did the chapter R. We're done with it. Aren't we done with Karate Kid stuff? Just about. But you got one last hurdle to get over. And the reason I'm bringing up the soccer coach and that soccer analogy and all that stuff, that some of you on YouTube are like, what the fuck should he say? Is that sometimes we don't like our coaches but our coaches have our best interest in mind because they aren't looking at today. You know, coach is looking at his players and he's like, you can, you can compliment each other. Your mommies and daddies can tell you how good you are after the game. You players can rally around each other and say, we're studs, we're bad A's, whatever it may be. But I'm not giving you nothing until you win it all because I want you hungry, you know? And so one of the things I'm gonna be doing this weekend is I'm gonna give you some homework and you may be like, ah, Brother Rich, I don't like you, man. Why do you keep having us do this little tedious crap? I'm done picking up the coat and hanging it up, okay? But here's the deal. Let's look at this problem right here, okay? Do this problem. Do that problem. I'll give you all one minute. Solve or simplify. 
Why? Because no equal sign. Clean it up. Simplify it. Clean that bedroom up. So the algebra concept here is called combine like terms. The algebra concept is called combine like terms. We're going to learn it next week. It's a big tool. We use it all the time. We're going to use it all semester. It's critical. And all it's going to do is say put the negative 5x with the negative 8x. Put the 7y with the negative 14y. Put the negative 13 with the negative 17. That's the algebra. But beyond that, it's arithmetic. This is negative 13x minus 7y minus 20. Say woo if you got it right. Sorry, you didn't get it right. Okay, so listen. How many of you got it right? Raise your hand. Isn't that 30? Oh, that's 30. My bad. I didn't get it right. Boo, Rich. Minus 30. Say woo if you got it right. Okay, good. <laughs> that's good on YouTube. I like evidence that Brother Rich is an idiot. Okay, here we go. Look up here. Raise your hand if you got it right. Okay? All right, check it out. If you had plus 30, if you had, I don't know, negative 3, you know, or something like that, you know, bottom line is, I'm not going to let you lose state. We're going to win state. But what we do in class today and what we do over this weekend is going to determine this because the algebra is easy. That's the easy stuff. It's the arithmetic underneath this that if you can't say negative 5 and negative 8 make negative 13 and you don't need a calculator to do it, okay, you're going to be in trouble. Every time you divorce these numbers from their variables, plug them into a calculator, remarry them back to the variable, have to do it with the x's, have to do it with the y's, have to do it with the integers, you are intensifying the potential to make an error. You got to be able to look at it and just do it, okay? So, first thing I want you to do in this quiz right here, right now, actually, I want you to go to the next page. I want you to go to the next page. I want to talk about signs versus operations. Then we're going to come back to the quiz. We're going to go back and forth to the quiz a good number of times uh, here in the next little bit. So, look at this problem right here. Negative 15 uh, plus negative 3, all right? Sign or operation right there? Everybody, one, two, three. Sign or operation? Sign or operation? Okay, what is a sign in math? A sign is like an attribute of a number. It's like if you have blonde hair or brown hair or blue eyes. That's an attribute. It's something about how you look. There's only two attributes of any number. They're either positive or they're negative. We clear? They're either positive or they're negative. There's no in between, okay? Next thing, what is an operation? When we talk about the order of operations, an operation is something you do to a number. So it's add, subtract, multiply, divide. That's an operation, okay? So on your quiz, you had signs and operations going on. So let's go back to the quiz real quick. Now that we know what a sign, well, actually, let's, let's go ahead and just take these three. They're from the quiz, let's just do these. Okay, everybody help me out here. Okay? We're working backward for a reason. Sign or operation? Sign. Okay, and what is the sign? Okay, sign or operation? Operation. And what is the operation? Minus. Subtraction or minus. Sign or operation? Sign. sign. What is the sign? Negative. Okay? Sign or operation? Sign. What is the sign? Negative. Sign or operation? operation? What is the operation? Plus. Addition. Plus. Plus. Okay. Sign or operation? Sign. Sign or operation? Sign. What is it? It's negative. Sign or operation? Sign. Sign or operation? Both. It's an operation. What operation? The operation is what? Subtraction. And the sign is the number is? Ultimately, it's negative because we're going to learn here that negative 15 minus 5 and negative 15 plus negative 5 are the same. Did you know those two are the same? They're the same. A single minus and plus a negative are the same thing. We're going to teach you that here in about mm, 20 minutes. 
okay? All right, let's go back to the quiz, everybody. Let's jump back to the quiz. And there's some stuff on this page they're asking us to do, and I have it memorized, so we're just gonna do it. We're not gonna have to go back and forth, okay? So we're gonna go to this quiz. And the first thing I want you to do with me is I want you to circle all the addition problems. But wait, addition when we start, not after you manipulate things. Like this problem right here, do you change that to addition? Raise your hand if you change that to addition, okay? But what is the problem to begin with? Subtraction. It's a subtraction problem. So don't tell me that's addition, okay? So I'm gonna go through these with you and I want everybody to participate, yell. Addition, subtraction. Okay, so what's this first one? Subtraction, addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction, addition, addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction, subtraction, addition, subtraction, subtraction, addition. I'm messed with your minds. This one down here. Addition, subtraction. Addition, subtraction, subtraction, subtraction. Circle all the addition problems that you just said addition to. Circle them all. Okay? So looking up here, this one should be circled. This one should be circled. This one should be circled. So in this first column, it's every other one. Up here, the first one, the third one should be circled, and the last one should be circled. Okay, down here. Over here, bag the first three, they're all subtraction. This fourth one and the sixth one should be circled. Those are addition, okay? All right, so now you obviously know the difference between addition and subtraction. And it says on the page to underline the ones that are subtraction. I don't know who wrote the book, but he's dumb. Because we don't need to underline them. We already circled all the ones that are addition, so all the other ones are subtraction, so we don't need to differentiate. We've already differentiated them. Who wrote the book? You. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, anyways, um, let's now talk about something else with the addition problems. So, you know what a sign is in an operation. So, here's our first addition problem. Agreed? Negative 15 plus 5. Negative 15 plus 5. What is the sign of the first number? Negative. What's the sign of the second number? Positive. That's why that's both what? An operation and a sign. Agreed? That's a, it's a it's a plus, which is an operation, but this is a positive number, right? So do those two numbers have same or different signs? Different. different, okay? So underneath that, underneath the answer you wrote stuff, somewhere in there, I want you to write, so this was negative 10, right? D-I-F-F -F for different, diff, okay? And we're gonna do this for every one of the addition problems. We're gonna determine, are their signs the same or are they different? Okay, so now let's go to the next addition problem. Look up here, 15 plus negative 5. 15 plus negative 5. Okay, uh, is this positive or negative? Positive, positive or negative? negative? Same or different? different? Diff, put diff under that. Okay, and then this last one, negative 15 plus negative 5. Negative 15 plus negative 5. So this was diff, okay. Uh, positive or negative? negative? Positive or negative? negative. Same or different? Same, Same sign, okay. So go ahead and finish that on the other columns. I'll just go through it with you. Look up here. Same or different? different. Everybody. Different. Okay. Same or different? Same. Same. Uh, same or different? Different. different. Okay. This one right here. Same or different? Different. different. And last one. Same. same. Okay. All right. Now, I want you to slide down section three. Raise that in class you have to raise your hand before you speak. Raise your hand if you have to raise your hand before you speak. Okay? Okay. Don't do that in here. Don't raise your hand. Just speak. You got a question? Ask it. You want to say something? Say something. We start getting crazy. Maybe I'll say, okay, let's take turns. Okay? But anytime you want to talk, just talk. Okay, next thing, okay. How many people um, were educated from uh, from home for a good period of time during COVID? Raise your hand. 
Raise your hand. You were educated from home for a good period of time. We're talking at least six months or more. Okay, raise your hand. Okay, so um, did you do a lot of talking uh, when you were home? Nope. Okay, so we got this thing going on where we got all these kids and, and they don't talk anymore. All right? I, I'm telling you, I had a young lady in class today. She came up to me after class. She asked the best fetching question. It changed the way I taught for the rest of the day. But the bummer was, when did she ask the question? So her class, what? They didn't get the benefit of me altering how I taught it. She asked a great question that made me a better teacher because now I knew, that I was like, that is such a good question and I'm not clarifying that the way I'm teaching it. So I've altered the way I've taught all day and you're the beneficiary of her question. But she never asked it. So I said, why didn't you ask that question? And she said, I just don't like to talk in class. And I'm, I'm like, are you embarrassed? She's like, no, I just like to be quiet, you know? Listen, guys, I get it. Like, when I'm sitting here, I don't want to be a participant, okay? But when I was a kid, they used to give participation points in school. Whoever got participation points, yeah? And it forced you to, like, you know, interact and stuff. Well, we're too old for that crap. We're not giving you participation points, you know? It's a long semester. We're together for three months, you know? And this is math. Like, how sexy can it be, right? How funny can it be? How glamorous can it be? It can't. It's math, right? How many people love math? Raise your hand. You love math. One person. Two, maybe one and a half. Add me in there, maybe two. <laughs> hey, don't you love math? Uh, yeah, I like it a lot. I don't know if I love it. I love playing pickleball. I love my wife. I love my kids. You know what I'm saying? I love to surf. I love to ski. I don't know that I, you know, I don't spend time doing math in my spare time. You get what I'm saying? You know, so I don't know that I love it. I like it. I like doing it. I'm good at it. You know, and when you're good at something, it loves you back, right? But for most of us, we don't like it. So we had a long semester together. So I'm just saying, talk, you know? I didn't care if you talk about crap. If I'm up there, you're like, Brother Rich, man. Thinking of all kinds of funny things I can say right now, but most of them are not appropriate on YouTube. Brother Rich, man. How'd you meet your wife yeah. at a bar? Um, yeah, I don't know. I tell you something funny, probably something not true, you know. Um, but you know, talk, hang out. You know, it's us together this semester, and we're like I said, we're gonna have some opportunities, especially when we get past this karate kid stuff, and we're gonna have some more opportunities to work in groups and, and get to know each other's names a little bit better, stuff like that. But I'm just saying, don't raise your hands. And you want to ask something, just ask them. If I'm teaching something up there. And, you're, and I'm writing something, you're like, hey, you know, don't worry about interrupting me, okay? Like, really, seriously. I'm helping you work through this workbook. It's funny to talk. You know how many times I look at this workbook every day? Like, way too many times. So what brings me joy is when we talk about, you know, other things. You know what I'm saying? Like, for the rich, you know? Why do you got the same pair of pants on every day, but you wear different shoes all the time? I'm like, you noticed? Just kidding. Okay? <laughs> All right. So I went to graduate school, and I thought that when you go to graduate school, that I mean, I wanted to be a teacher for a living. Um, how many of you know exactly what you want to do for a living? Raise your hand. Okay, what do you want to do? Technical project manager. So you're talking like technology, yeah. like that kind of stuff. So give me. So what kind of work would you do then? Like, give me an example. Uh, manage technical projects. I don't know. That's what my dad does. And okay. I think that's interesting. Okay. What company does he work for? Uh, Arivia. Okay. What do you want to do? Federal field agent. Federal field agent. All right. So like man from uncle kind of stuff. Kind of. Kind of. All right. That sounds kind of fun. What else? Anybody? What do you want to do? I. What do you want to do? I want to be a therapist and a psychologist. A therapist and a psychologist. Great. I need some therapy, man. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Okay. She's like, leave me alone, brother. Rich. All right, let's go. <laughs> I think you need help me. I'm helpless. Okay. What else? I saw some other hands. What do you do? I want to be a veterinarian radiologist. Oh, cool. Cool. All right. You like animals? Yeah, I work in the hospital. Oh, that's now. awesome. Favorite animal? I like dogs. Dogs. I'm a dog lover, too. That's cool. All right. What else? I saw some other hands. Anybody else? What do you want to do, Batman? Nuclear physicist. Nuclear physicist. Throw ham. That's pretty impressive, man. All right. Are you are you gonna go like mega mind on me here and 
you know, like blow up the world. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else know what they want to do? Yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. So I'll be at Duracan Cool. Cool. And own your own business. Own your own business. You know what you want to do business-wise? Yeah. Find out too. Oh, cool, cool, very cool. All right, how many of you are like, I'm not sure what I want to do? Raise your hand. Okay, that's usually the majority of us. And when I was in college, and that's one of the reasons I want you to listen to that that um, devotional talk, is that you know that's just a big question for most of us. Like, I'm not sure what I want to do yet. And when I was in college, I didn't know 100% what I wanted to do. Eventually, I landed on I wanted to be a college professor. You want to know how I landed on that? Yeah? I had no other options. Ouch. I actually did have a lot of options. And I say that genuinely. I studied pre-med for a while. I was good student. I, I, I considered being a doctor. I studied geology for a while. I mean, I sell rocks. Not rock like street rock. You know, drugs. I sell stones in the real world. And, um... And I, uh, and I, and I love geology a lot, but I landed on wanting to be a college professor. And one of the reasons that I, I was able to do that is I read my patriarchal blessing and said I was talented at teaching. And my dad gave me, it was interesting, when I got my patriarchal blessing at age 17, uh, the state patriarch told my dad one year later to give me an additional patriarchal blessing that I was to use the two in conjunction with each other for the rest of my life. And so at age 18, my dad gave me another patriarchal blessing. I don't know if people know this, but you know your father actually has the right to give you a patriarchal blessing, and the state patriarch is actually a second option. I know that sounds funny because in the church he is the first option because he has that calling, but literally from a standpoint of authority and ability to receive revelation in your behalf, your father, if he is a worthy priesthood holder, is your number one option to give you a patriarchal blessing, but you still go to the state patriarch because they've been called to do so, and they spiritually prepare themselves to do so, but your father can give you patriarchal blessing. Kind of a cool thing. Okay? So, in my dad's patriarchal blessing, it said that I, I would have a living that would basically um, allow me to you know, help other people and, and feel fulfilled in my own life and stuff like that. And then and the teaching team, and it all just kind of came together. I'm like, you know, I want to be a college professor. Okay? All right. So, with that in mind, I'm a super competitive person, and I applied to the top five schools in the nation in my field. I got accepted to four of them, got a full ride scholarship to every one of the ones that accepted me. I was stoked. I wanted to be the greatest teacher ever, I wanted to be the Michael Jordan math teacher. I was so excited about it. I got to graduate school thinking that I was going to learn from the best teachers ever about how to become the best teacher. And the teachers there stunk. They were terrible. They were some of the worst teachers I ever had. And they weren't invested in teaching or teaching anything about teaching. Do you know what we do in graduate school? It starts with the letter R. Read. Read. Big time. Research. But... Re, re search, research. All graduate school is about research. And the reason it's about research is what makes the world go around? Cheddar, money, money, okay? Money makes the world go around. So the government and private institutions fund graduate schools to do research. What kind of research do we do? Well, we do research about things we're studying. So you want to become a therapist and you're going to go to graduate school? Maybe you'll go to MFT school, marriage and family therapy. You know, maybe you'll go to sociology or psychology and, and, and get like, you know, a master's in clinical psychology, stuff like that. And you're going to do therapy work, but you're going to, and you're going to take classes about the stuff, but you're also going to do a lot of research and you're going to conduct research in clinical psychology. And a lot of these like reviews and articles, they're studying you know, people's minds and behavior and all that kind of stuff. And we read research to make decisions. So we get to college and I'm studying how to teach students who struggle with math. And what do we do? Well, we study things like fractions, right? Because I told you that about third grade, students get involved in fractions and this becomes a real 
you know, inflection point in their learning where it's like, ooh, they hit a wall. Well, another big wall was negative numbers. Do you remember when you were a little kid and you had five minus two, what does it equal? Three. Three. And you had five plus two, what does it equal? Seven. And then you had two minus five, and you're like, fetch. Okay? <laughs> And how many people remember when they first hit negative numbers? How many people remember it? I remember it. And I remember it being a little traumatizing. Like, I did, I did not like it. Who, who can relate to me? Raise your hand if you can relate to me. It was like, whoa, this is kind of hard. This is weird. Okay? Absolutely. So, one of the ways that we study negative numbers and, and the way students struggle with them is we gave them the quizzes that we just gave you. So, that quiz you just took, it's identical to a quiz that we gave in graduate school to thousands of students. Okay? And everyone who got 100% on it, we interviewed them afterwards to find out how they got 100%. And we found a pattern, and it was very consistent. All the students that got 100% were doing a very similar pattern. And then we were thinking, okay, so we found this pattern. Could we reteach this pattern to students and have them retake the quiz and do better? And so, we figured out a way to take the pattern, teach it, and then we administered it to students again, and they got 100% of the quizzes. And it was really kind of cool, okay? And that's a lot of what graduate school is. It's doing research, okay? So in this red box is this, this pattern that developed when students got 100% on these negative number quizzes. This is the pattern. So I'm gonna write up here, same sign. Okay, I'm gonna help you fill in your workbook right now, same sign, and there are three steps. One, you take the absolute value of each number. Two, you're going to, well, let's think about this for just a second. Let's just stop there and look at this. We got negative 15 plus negative five. Negative 15 plus negative five, all right? All eyes up here, look up here, please. So, raise your hand if you got 100% of the quiz. Raise your hand if you got 100%, okay? Keep them up. How many of you got 100% of the quiz, took the absolute value of each of these two numbers before you worked with them? Raise your hand if you did that. Okay, I see one hand up. All the other hands are, maybe two. All the other hands go down. Okay, all right. So who's the liar, me or you? You're saying, well, you're the liar, brothers, because I know I didn't take the absolute value. Okay, but what does absolute value mean? You just learned it last class period. Absolute value, absolute value means what? Absolute. To make things positive. Okay. So we asked students who got 100% of the quiz, what did you do here? And when we interviewed them, here's what they said. Uh, 15 plus 5 is 20, negative 20. We're like, okay, slow down. Let's write this down. They said, 15 plus 5 is 20, negative 20. We're like, okay, explain that a little bit to us. And when we got to it, look at, look at this. These two numbers are what? Okay, so I want you that got 100% of the quiz, I want you to think about this. The brain likes the path of least resistance. The brain loves the path of least resistance. Look up here. Do we like two plus five or negative two plus negative five? Which one? Two plus five, every time. Our brain gravitates towards that. We like ease with our brain, okay? Why does our brain like the path of least resistance? Why do we, how do we know this? Okay, from a gospel perspective, is your brain part of your spirit or your body? Is your brain part of your spirit or your body? 100% it's your body, okay? And in scriptures, we learn the natural man is an enemy to God, right? And never has been and never will be. So the natural man wants, and the natural woman wants to be lazy, sinful, okay, carnal, okay? And so our mind, our brain wants to be lazy. And so we like the easy route, so we don't want to think of this in the negative realm, we think of it in the positive realm. We add them in the positive realm, and then we're like, okay, I gotta do a little bit of work, brain. So we reconcile the fact they were all negative to begin with, so they're all negative to end with. So as we went through this with these students, we realized we couldn't just tell people, make the numbers positive. Because that's not a mathematical concept. We say, take the absolute value of each number. And then the second step is the same, the word same is like the word sum. What does sum mean? To add. To add. And so then you add the two numbers. And then the third step is the reconciliation step. We have to apply the original sign to the answer. So let's go back to this problem and redo it. I want you guys to help me real quick. 
What is the absolute value of negative 15? What is the absolute value of negative 5? Add the two numbers. 15 plus 5? And then reconcile. What was the original sign of all the numbers? So the answer is negative 20. So then we took the students who didn't get 100% and we gave them 20 problems like this. And we said, do them. So we give them another one. Look up there. Let's look at negative 3 plus negative 5 down here. This is example. Negative 3 plus negative 5. All that's up here, okay? Help me out. What is the absolute value of negative 3? What is the absolute value of negative 5? Same or different sign? Same. Same means sum. Sum means we're going to do what? Add. Add those two numbers. 3 plus 5 makes 8. All of them were what to begin with? So the answer is negative 8. And we would have students do this. We would make them do the absolute value, add them, reconcile the sign. Absolute value, add them, reconcile the sign. 20 problems. By the time they got to the fifth problem, in almost every instance, they were like, do we have to show this work anymore? Like, we can do this in our head. And I'm like, yeah, you got to keep doing it. And then we give them another quiz, because you can't have some students do five problems, and some do 15, some do 20. In a research project, everybody has to do the same thing. Or you have what you call, you know, errors in your, you know, control group. Okay? And so we had them all do this, and we'd have them take the quiz, and invariably, almost every student would get 100% of the quiz again. It was really kind of cool to watch. Okay? So one of the reasons I had to identify if you have same or different sign is because if you're adding two numbers together, they always either have the same sign or different sign. Okay, there's no other option. You take any two numbers on that quiz that were being added, and you wrote same diff, same diff, right? There was no other option. You could never be both. You either have the same sign or you have different signs. So the ones that have different sign, okay, here we go, different sign. We got three steps. Well, they're almost identical steps. Absolute value of each number. Step number two, different is like the word difference. What does difference mean? Difference means to subtract. Now I want to show you something about the path of least resistance. Please look up here. Do you like 5 minus 2 or 2 minus 5? Which one do you like better? Five Brain always likes 5 minus 2. It's easier. It's the path of least resistance. So how do we describe that to a student? Big number minus smaller number. That's always the way it runs. Notice this is small minus big. So we subtract big number minus small number. Okay. And the final step is the reconciliation step. And now we have to apply the big number's original sign to the answer. Okay? So let's go ahead and take that problem up there. You've got negative 15 plus 5, negative 15 plus 5, all is up there. Absolute value of negative 15, help me. Absolute value of 5. five. Okay? Same or different sign? So we're going to? 15 minus 5 or 5 minus 15? Which one do we like? 15 minus 5, big minus small. And that makes what? Now we go back. The bigger number is 15. Its original sign was? So the answer is? Because we got more negatives than positives. Because it's bigger. Let's do that first problem up there. 10 plus negative 12. 10 plus negative 12. Okay? Absolute value of 10. Help me. 10. Absolute value of negative 12. 12. 12. Okay? Add or subtract these. Subtract because they have what? Different signs. So we take the big minus the small, 12 minus 10. What's the answer? 2. two. And the larger number's original sign was? Negative. So the answer is? Negative. negative 2. Okay? Okay. Let's draw this attention here to the board. Let's do this one in our heads and talk it over with each other. Okay? So drop your pens and pencils. Let's just do this. 5 plus negative 8. Please look at this. Is this addition or subtraction? Addition or subtraction? Subtraction. It's an addition problem to begin with, right? It's an addition problem to begin with. Same or different sign? Different. Different. Different means difference. Difference means we will. And that's why some of you were saying subtraction. I got you. Okay? Big number minus small number. What are you going to do? 8 minus 5 equals Larger number's original sign? Answer is? Okay, let's do it fast. Watch this. 
Same or different sign? So you're going to? 8 minus 5 is? Original bigger number? Answer? Done. Okay? All right, cool. That's everything in this section. We're learning two sections today. We're going to talk about the homework ever so briefly. But one of the things that was really cool in conducting this kind of research is that we could take students who weren't good at this and in a matter of just an hour, we could help them get good at it by following this pattern. And one of the things that can happen is we can force our brain to do hard things. It doesn't want to do them by nature, but we can force it. And so when we start to do something over and over and over again, our brain starts to like it more because it becomes easier, right? And that's why when you do this 10, 15, 20 times, over and over and over, you're like, I don't want to do this. I'm like, no, you got to do this. It's because your brain starts to develop muscle memory, mental muscle memory, and it's kind of a cool thing, all right? So tonight in your homework, please pay attention. Whether you got 100 on the quiz or not, in problems 1 through 11, 1 through 11, you are not to use a calculator, and you are to show all your work, which means you're to show the absolute value of each number, add or subtract them based on if they're same or different sign, and then apply or reconcile the sign and the answer. Just 1 through 11. After 11, you can use your calculator with all these decimals and fractions and all that crap. Okay? You guys cool? Okay. But if you don't show your work in 1 through 11, graders are going to dock you. Next thing, let's talk about some of these interesting questions. All eyes up here. Find the opposite or additive inverse of 46. What's the opposite of 46? Negative. Exactly, negative 46. Opposite of negative 68.23. Yeah, 68.23. This is kind of funny. Evaluate negative x when x equals negative 32. Sometimes we make this stuff more difficult than it needs to be, okay? The directions up here and the directions right here are identical. You're just not understanding it because I'm not telling you x equals 46 up here. I'm just giving you a number and saying find the opposite. But if I give you x and I ask for negative x, I'm asking for the opposite. Make sense? So what's negative x of negative 32? 32. What's negative x of 1 over 504? Negative 1 over 5, 4. Because I'm asking for the negative value of that. I'm asking for the negative value of that. Well, the, a negative of a negative makes a? Very good. And then this next one, really weird. And this one really gets students all kind of like brain wedgy. Like, okay? A negative of a negative makes a? So a negative of negative x is just? It's just x. So if x equals negative 4.6, what's the answer? Negative 4.6. And when you go to do your homework, you're like, is that the right answer? It is the right answer. What is negative of negative x if x equals 3? It's 3. You cool? So we just did a bunch of homework really fast together, and most of it. And so you're going to go back, do it again. Not a lot of work to show. It's going to be pretty, pretty straightforward. You cool? OK. OK. So. What about the subtraction problems on the quiz? What do we teach the students about subtraction? Well, subtraction, the number one rule is to not do it. It's to change subtraction to addition. Please look up here. Is 7 minus 5, is 7 minus 5 equal to 7 plus negative 5? Yes. Well, some of you were saying yes, and some of you earlier when I asked you about this, you're like, I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. So let's prove it. What is 7 minus 5? Yeah, our brain likes that problem. Big minus small makes 2. Agreed? So is this the same? What would the answer to this have to be for these two to be the same? That could be 2. Let's take what you just learned in the last section. What's the absolute value of 7? What's the absolute value of negative 5? These are being added, but they have same or different signs. Which one? Different. So we are going to? And are we going to take 7 minus 5 or 5 minus 7? And that makes what? And the original sign of the larger number was? So the answer is? So these are the? Boom. 
7 minus 5 and 7 plus negative 5 are the same. So one thing you can always count on is that a single minus is the equivalent of plus a negative of that same value. Seven minus, so look up here. 5 minus 3 equals 5 plus what? Negative, negative 3. All, everybody, help me out here. Okay? Uh, 14 minus 2 is the same as 14 plus, plus, plus negative 2. 2 minus 5 is the same as? 2 plus negative 5. Very good. Very, very good. That's really critical. So I want you to go back to the quiz with me briefly. Go back to the quiz. Maybe. There we go. So all the subtraction problems were the ones that we did not circle. I'm going to point to them. And in the middle of the problem, there is either a single minus or two minuses or a minus and negative. So in this one, I, I want you to yell one. In this one, it's two. So think about this. What would this one be? Two. two. Okay, so we'll come back to this. What's this? One, two, two. two. Okay, let's come over here. One, two, two. Okay. One, one, two. All right. So if you would like to really quick next to those, just circle a one or circle a two. So we know it's either got one or two minuses in it, minus a negative, if you want to get technical. And then go back to this page on section 1.4. And we're going to fill in this chart about the number one rule converts to subtraction to addition. So what do we write in this chart? Well, it says in this chart here, it says, what do we start with in the middle? So, start with. Okay, under the start with column, you either start with one, a single minus, or two, minus a negative. Make sense? And then, we're going to change those. We're going to change those. And if that, if that word change isn't up there, I'd write it. So, once we change them, what do they become? Well, a single minus becomes plus a negative. We just did that over here, all these problems. Believe me, I had a single minus, and you said it was plus negative 3. At a single minus, you said it was plus negative 2. At a single minus, you said it was plus negative 5, right? Mm -hmm. I want everybody to go like this right now. Go like this. Come on. Entertain me. And I want you to, ooh, 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 oh, yeah. And make some noise when you do it. Okay? So here we go. You gotta, you gotta copy me here. <laughs> okay. Two minuses make a plus. What is it about going like that? That just makes you kind of giggle and smile. I don't know, but. If it makes you happy, do it some more, okay? So here's the deal. Two minuses always become a plus. Example, all right? Seven minus five equals? Seven, seven plus, plus negative, five. negative five. Seven minus negative five equals? Seven, seven plus, plus five. five. Very good, okay. Let's do these three problems at the bottom here, or four problems, okay? Negative five minus negative six. Negative five minus negative six, okay? All is up here, is that right? Negative 5. Do I change the negative in front of the 5? No. It's a negative. It's an attribute. It's a sign. I change subtraction, which is an operation. That's not subtraction. That's subtraction. And because I have two of these, they can come together and make a positive. So this is going to be what? Plus 6. Now look at this problem. Okay. Now that's an addition problem. I made a little line there because this is now my problem. Are we adding or subtracting I'm sorry, are we adding same or different signs? Different. different. And different means we're going to do what? Subtract. And so you're going to take the big minus the small, which is 6 minus 5, which makes 1. The original larger number was? Not negative. Don't look at this, because that's the subtraction problem. Once we brought it to addition, it was positive, so the answer is 1. We cool? Let's do the next one. 7 minus 12. That's going to be 7 Help me. Plus, plus negative 12. 
Same or different sign? Different. So we're going to subtract. So we're going to take big minus small, which is 12 minus 7, which makes 5. The larger number originally was? Negative. So it's negative 5. We cool? Okay. Negative 7 minus 16. Shoot down here. Negative 7 minus 16. Negative 7 plus, plus negative 16. Same or different sign? Same. Same, Same means we're going to? Add 7 and 16 make 23. They were all what? Negative. So it's negative 23. Okay. Last one. 4 minus negative 9. 4 minus negative 9. These two come together to make what? Positive. 4 plus 9. This makes 13. Okay. How many of you have learned some things today that help you reconcile what you got wrong on the quiz? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. Well, then we did something worthwhile. Let's go to the last page. Okay, what kind of what kind of work should you show tonight in, in your homework in 1.4? Okay? I want to show you something. The first one, 4 minus 9. This is what this is what I expect from you. 4 minus 9, you should write 4 plus negative 9. I don't care if you do the absolute value thing, but now, same or different. Which means you're gonna. So this makes 9 minus 4, which makes 5. And the larger number was? Negative. So the answer is negative 5. And you can circle that. That's all the work you got to show. We cool? Okay. Going back to the last page in the um, ex explanation here. String addition subtraction. I, I want to show you something here. I think, I don't know. I debate, I, I, if I do print this, uh, sorry, when I print this the next semester, I'm thinking about getting rid of this page. It's really not something that's critical. So I want to take the problem at the bottom there. Uh, Grace, would you read that to me? The negative 12 minus 7 plus 8 minus negative 8 minus 5 plus 3 minus negative 12. Thank you. Okay, so here's the deal. You can take this problem and you can say negative 12 minus 7 is negative 12 plus negative 7. Addition of same sign, so you're going to add them. 12 and 7 make 19, they're all negative. And then you can drop down to plus 8, and you can do that problem. You get what I'm doing? And negative 19 plus 8, different sign. You're going to subtract. 19 minus 8 is 11. Negative is the bigger one. Then you're going to drop this down. Well, minus a negative 8 becomes plus 8. You see what I'm doing here? And negative 8 plus 11 makes negative 3, and then you can drop down the next one minus 5, which is negative 3 you know, plus negative 5. And we can say same sign, and that makes negative 8, because we add them. And then you drop that down, it's plus 3, and you say that's different, so 8 minus 3 is 5, and the larger one is negative, so it's negative 5. And then finally, you bring this down to minus minus makes plus 12, and you end up with difference, so you subtract. 12 minus 5 is 7, and the larger number was positive, and the answer is 7. I do it differently. Because I, I just feel like I can make too many mistakes. Please look up here. You can do this, hear me, you can do this any way you want as long as you get it right. And you know what? That's the truth of anything in this class. Did you hear what I just said? You can do it any way you want as long as you're getting it right. But you've got to show your work on your homework. But I mean, you're taking a test, I don't give a fetch what you do. I want you to get it right. I want you to have success. You know? I've never told anybody in any venture in life to not do something if they're successful unless that success is dangerous in the sense that maybe you're successful this time but it's not a consistent method and if you try it on a test on a harder problem it won't work that is dangerous right or in work if you're doing something that could jeopardize your safety right so look up here i look at this problem and the first thing i do in this red box is i convert all subtraction to addition so i call this did i say i changed the negatives no i can't do that so it's still negative 12 but it's plus negative 7. do you understand that plus 8, minus and minus makes plus 8, this is going to be plus negative 5, because I have a single minus, plus 3, and plus 12. You see what I did there? I changed all the subtraction to addition. Not all the negatives to positives, all the subtraction to addition. Then I gather all my positives. Okay, so here's a positive, here's a positive, here's a positive, here's a positive. So I have 8, and 8, and 3, and 12, 
and I can add all those up, and that makes 31, I believe. Uh, 16, uh, 28, yep, 31, okay? And I can add them all up because they have the same sign. And then I take all my negatives. And I have negative 12, negative 7, and negative 5. And that makes negative 24, okay? And I can add all those up because they're all the same sign. And then I have one single problem there to do. 31 plus negative 24. Same or different sign? Different. What do I do when I have different sign? I subtract. 31 minus 24 is what? Seven. It's 7. And it's positive 7. Is that what we got on the other problem when I did it? Okay. I'm not going to do the first problem. I either did one or the other in class today. If you want to know the answer to this, it's negative 22. That problem right there, that problem right there is negative 22. So if you want to try that at home, okay, 22 plus 18 is 40, 40 plus 7 is 47, 47 minus 42 is 5, and 5 minus, negative, and 5 minus 27 is going to be negative 22. That is negative 22. You can do that on your own. Okay. Let's go ahead and, and end that for today.